So this is this gentleman's first amateur boxing match. The title of the video is quite literally my first amateur boxing match. I guess I should have known this is YouTube and it's the internet. So everyone's going to post everything about everything. I didn't quite realize there was such a, a, a surplus of amateur boxing content. It's common sense. Obviously I'm just being a doofus. I'm being an idiot, but um, it, it was, it's very cool to see that someone's first amateur boxing match, someone who has a desire um, to grow into something that could become a success in this sport, uh, get, such attention this video has over 200,000 views that's great uh for someone like this i mean um i don't know you could also pose the argument that kind of so much attention at someone's early stage could be detrimental but i think that's that depends on the person it depends on a person's mentality it depends on how they process attention um and maybe this 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 young man maybe he doesn't even know about it maybe you know He's got a good head on his shoulders and he doesn't let it get to him. And of course, I don't know where he is now. This video was filmed four years ago. Um, but I think that it's it's so great that you can easily see the, the, the progression and the early steps of someone who could quite possibly be something great in the future. I have no idea where he is now. I haven't clicked on the YouTube channel or anything to see if, if he's continued to make videos on subsequent amateur fights. Um, but I am very excited to see what happens in this one. Um, I'm not coming at this with the idea to hate on this young man or to, you know, completely, you know, break him down or anything like that. I'm no, obviously, I'm no professional boxer and I don't even have a lot of uh, amateur experience, uh, at least not a lot of in-depth amateur experience. I'm uh, almost pretty much a complete casual. I just love boxing. I just love boxing. I think it's fantastic. And I, I just love to watch and learn uh, from other people. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, stuff like this, you know, the amateur stage, the stage where you're still learning and you're still polishing and you're still forging ahead. You're still overcoming a lot of the doubts and uncertainties. Um, it's a wonderful to watch. Very courageous for this young man to do this at all. Um, it's not easy. Putting yourself in a position where you're hitting yourself against someone who wants to dominate you and who wants to hurt you while doing so. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. Not an easy thing to do. So right off the bat, you know, I think that's what people say when they say that I have a lot of respect for people who step into the ring in the first place. It's because not only psychologically, but physically, fighting is nothing but risk. Boxing is nothing but risk. There's a lot of bad things that can happen in that ring. Uh, a lot of bad things that can happen to you. A lot of bad things that can happen to your brain, uh, to your body, to your organs. It's a lot of risk, man. And the better you get, the more the risk intensifies. So here he goes. I'm guessing that's his that's his second in the uh, in the orange. They've got a, actually they've got a pretty nice crowd at this tournament. Uh, at least from what I'm seeing, I can't really see all the way back there. It doesn't look like it's packed, packed, but I mean, it's a nice venue for an amateur. I'm guessing this is a tournament for for an amateur tournament. It doesn't have to be though. You know, this could not be a tournament. Sometimes you go to an amateur event and you're just fighting once and that's what it is. And then after you fight, you're just waiting around for, you know, if you come from a stable, you're waiting around for the rest of your guys from your stable to get their fights over with, you know, and you're cheering them on and you're watching them do their work. So if this is going to be the only, the only time that he has to show his stuff, if this is going to be the only instance in which he can try to get a W and add on to his record, that adds to a lot of pressure as well. This is the only time I'm fighting tonight, so I've got to make it count. I don't, I'm not getting another opportunity against somebody else. You know? It's one of those things, too, where you appreciate, arguably, you appreciate it so much more when you're only fighting once in a night. Because this is the only opportunity you have to kind of grow. And hopefully you do it exponentially. If you're fighting multiple times in a night, if you're fighting multiple people, you know, or multiple people in a sequence of days, even. You know, you're getting an opportunity to grow that much faster. But here, you got to really dissect 
what's going on after the fact, what happened after the fact, and how you can improve. So I'm just going to say red and blue, because uh, obviously I don't know their names. Red is putting on some early pressure, pawing away with the jab. Right off the bat, you see red style. He likes to keep his jab low. He likes to keep his jab low by his waist. Making it an elusive offensive tool. And yet, ooh, that was a nice check hook, I think. Uh, red swung in with a hook, and blue immediately responded with a hook of his own. I'm going to remind that because I just want to see that again. Okay, no, it, it wasn't necessarily a check. He kind of just threw the hook, and I think actually red countered. So blue... Yeah, blue attacked, and red immediately responded with a check hook. That was nice timing. Ref getting in the way, like refs sometimes do. <laughs> Both fighters seem very, very relaxed. Very, very relaxed. There's no, um, there's no extraordinary stiffness or extreme kind of awkwardness that you would expect from people at the very early stages of a, of a, of their boxing journey. They actually look relatively experienced for amateurs, very similar to that first fight that I talked about before. They, uh, they don't look like complete beginners. I mean, I mean, they're doing a lot of things right. The positions of the position of their bodies. How I think what's most important too is their composure. How relaxed they are. They're not kind of wildly flailing about, or you know, they're actually getting into, you know, relatively calculated exchanges here. We got left again, pawing with the jab, measuring distance, waiting to throw that right hand. Gets a combination, right hand, left hand, and he's punishing his guy in the corner by staying there. He's not. He's not angling out. He's not. He didn't clinch, at least it didn't look like anyway. In that situation, it would have probably behooved the guy in blue to, to clinch him. And he did later in the exchange. Probably a little bit earlier would have been better, but... He's leaning against the ropes. He's more than content. He's kind of showing his style here. That he's not someone who takes command of the ring. He's someone who's more than content to possibly even do a lot of counter punching. He's a fight. Ooh, that was great. What happened here? Yep, he's throwing his combinations, knowing he can do work when his opponent's against the ropes. He sees his opponent's low relax. His hands are low. Yep, he ducked something that he thought was coming. Doing nice work. Guy in blue ducked a jab, and then when he backed away, his hands were low, and he just immediately, immediately took advantage. Oh, I guess he rocked him. Uh, took advantage. Uh, maybe... Okay, all right. Yeah, it was a, could they call a standing eight count? He's not being as effective uh, as his opponent. He looks like he's very vulnerable, like he's going to take um, a lot of unnecessary damage. So you don't have to be knocked down in boxing um, uh, to kind of start being counted out. That's what they call a standing eight count. If the ref sees that you're just uh, getting the business, um, and it's completely one-sided. He can make the decision to possibly stop a fight if he sees that you're just completely ineffective. Uh, so the guy in red is quite obviously winning this fight so far. Uh, it's not even a question. He's taking command of the ring. He's applying a lot of effective pressure. Um, even though he's keeping his jab a, a bit low, you can see that it's a part of his style. So his left hand isn't a good defensive tool. He doesn't really, he does, he's not really thinking about that. He's using his, the, the low position of his jab to make it an elusive offensive tool. Because a lot of the times, jabs are a bit harder to see when they come from such a low angle. Uh, when you have a more orthodox boxing stance, when you keep your jab uh, very close to your chin, or at least, you know, elevated so it's near chest level, um, the way that you make that kind of jab elusive is when you throw the punch pop properly. When you just turn your hand over and you just extend your punch out in a in a straight line you know no cur no curvature no kind of looping none of that you know you 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 make it appear as if the hands not even moving by just turning all you have to do is really just turn your hand over and just let the let the punch move in a in a completely in a straight line but he's not doing that you can see that's not a part of his style he's not completely orthodox um, 
or at least he's not tra he's not altogether a he doesn't have an altogether traditional style. Um, his opponent in blue seems to be a bit more def uh, defensively traditional. Um, oh, even still, the guy in red, he's doing work in the clinch. He's getting points in um, when otherwise maybe nothing would have scored. What happened there? You got to take every opportunity to get points from the judges. You got to take every opportunity to try to get one over on your opponent, especially in situations when, you know, things are at a standstill when you're in the clinch. These these gentlemen are clearly not uh, pure brawlers, sluggers, inboxers. They're doing a, a good show of wanting to put on a boxing performance for the audience. So they're they're not all oh, they're not all out slugging uh, things out. So we clinched here. Oh, nice, very nice. The guy in blue, I think, wanted to throw a jab low. He went low. His hands were down when he did so. Yeah, he he dropped his right hand completely. And a guy in red, I don't know if he threw a right hand or a left hand. It looked like he threw a left. So guy in blue tried to start something. Yeah, he just immediately just turned over his hand and uh, just punished him for making such a, a, a wanton decision. Nice body work. Nice body work. Nice uh, liver slash kidney shot. More of a liver blow there. He's doing a lot of good work. Guy in red. Guy in blue is getting his shots hit every now and again, but... Uh, you know, he's clearly not as effective, and he's clearly, most importantly, not as commanding. Um, yeah, that was a horrible... I mean, really, in that position, there's not really much you can do. He tried to throw a right hand there, but his opponent dipped. The guy in red dipped uh, to kind of potentially, yeah, go underneath it. He, he ducked underneath his jab, and by doing so, uh, uh, effectively uh, ducked underneath and also incoming right. So he kind of nullified the Blues attack in that moment. He had no choice but to kind of try to chop down on him as he was uh, ducking into him. He didn't just duck, he ducked and moved forward, kind of nullifying any offense that he could have started there. It's a great opportunity to kind of clinch if he felt like he was overwhelmed and uh, create a standstill in the fight. Yeah, you can see they're... they're they're kind of, uh, both of them seem to have that style. Maybe the guy in red a little bit more. He's keeping his left hand, oh, that was a very good combination. He keeps his left hand low. His, his initial defense seems to be, he's using his shoulder to kind of uh, try to roll against incoming punches. His right hand in that position too. The great thing about uh, 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 a defense like that is that his, you can see his right hand, if I can pause it for just a moment. His right hand is primed, and, and see, the blue, the guy in blue is mirroring the guy in red here, pretty much. So what's happening here is that their left hands are defensively uh, negated. They're not using their left hands at all for defense. They're they're utilizing more. They're trying to rely on the reaction, uh, the reaction time, uh, to kind of allow punches to roll off their shoulder uh, when they come in. And also, they could use their right hands as um, tools to parry punches as well. In this in this situation, uh, what could be done if you get into a battle of the jab, you can use your right hand to kind of parry an incoming jab, and then immediately just throw uh, throw a right hand over the top. Um, but, the, you know, ooh, that was a very nice exchange there. But what I like about both of these guys is they're demonstrating a lot of uh, fearlessness. You know, it's not even even though things are one sided from a performance perspective, they're not one sided from a, a it doesn't seem that they're one sided from a psychological perspective. One guy isn't clearly dominating the other psychologically. It's just a matter of one guy seems to just have a little bit more confidence in the style that he's utilizing against his opponent. He's uh, he's taking advantage of more open. See, the guy in red is taking advantage of more openings than the guy in blue. That that's that's what happens, and you can see it right there. You know, um, they're staring at each other. They're kind of sizing up the moment, trying to look for an opening to attack. Guy in blue throws a jab. Guy in red takes care of it pretty well, and he immediately, uh, because the guy in blue's hands was low once more, it seems, throws his jab. He kind of parries it there. He parries it slightly. And the guys, it looks like the guy in blue's hands were a little bit too low, and he immediately just threw a one-two. You know, throws another one-two. Nice combination of straight punches from the guy in red. Guy in blue, I think, tried to respond with an uppercut, which in that moment was not the appropriate punch to throw. 
Uh, it was nice to be creative. It, it was a nice kind of creative display, but it wasn't the greatest punch to throw in that situation. But the uppercut is a very tricky punch to throw. Um, because in order for it to be effective, you have to use it when it's most appropriate. A lot of punches don't really... The, uh, the uppercut is quite possibly one of the easiest punches to punish. Um, and it's one of the easy... And it's one of the punches that can become immediately uh, ineffective uh, in an exchange. Especially if you're exchanging against a guy who's throwing a barrage of straight punches, which the guy in red did in that exchange, in, the, in that situation. Uh, the uppercut really doesn't mean anything in that case because... You know, you're not in a position where the guy's clearly bent over or, you know, he's quite possibly even angling out at an odd, uh, angling out in, uh, into an odd position that could maybe leave him open to the uppercut if he keeps his hands open while he moves around. It's just the uppercut is a very tricky punch to throw, you know, but I do give props for someone in their first boxing match to even have the confidence to throw the uppercut like that. You know, not a lot of amateurs, I think, utilize the uppercut as as, um, as a primary tool when they're first starting out. It's something I think that you use a lot or that you see could be an opportunity. You use it most often when your opponent is, in, is against the ropes. I think that's usually where the uppercut is is uh, properly utilized, especially in your for, in your early stages of learning. It's not a punch that you want to throw in the center of the ring. The uppercut. Whoa, what happened there? He definitely rocked him. Okay, so he fainted. He, he threw a faint. He fainted with the jab, the guy in blue. Let's see here. Okay, so they're in the center of the ring. A red guy in red is pawing, guy in blue uh, fainted with the jab. Guy in red threw a left hook to the body. Oh man, I think I gotta slow this down. They're too fast for me, buddy. Playback speed, let's go 0.5. Okay, and let's, let's rewind this just a slight amount. So what's happening here? Guy in red is pawing with the jab. We see he's pawing, pawing, pawing. Guy in blue is about to faint with a jab of his own, and he was about to respond with the right hand as well. So he fainted with the intent to possibly throw the right hand, but it didn't happen. Uh, guy in blue responded with a check hook after he was connected to the body by the guy in red, and he tried to step in with a right hand when guy in red did what? Guy in blue threw the right hand. Okay, see, guy in red actually did something very sweet. He tried to create a new angle for a um, combination of straight punches. Jab, right hand. He meant to throw jab, right hand, left hook. Um, but it didn't work because his opponent immediately... Um, he didn't orient his body quite to face him, but um, his hook got there first. That's what happened. His hook got there first. And his combination was shorter as well. So the guy in red started a combination with the jab. He was he was throwing a, a, a traditional 1-2-3. So he was throwing a 1-2-3. Guy in red just threw a 2-2-3. Two, two, so his, his combination pretty much got there first. Because he didn't have to worry about the time spent throwing his 2. And then he sees how effective the hook was. Uh, he sees how effective the hook was in that exchange. So he tries to throw it again immediately. And let's go ahead and make the playback speed normal. Okay, he sees how effective the hook is there. He throws it immediately again because he sees that it worked. The guy in red responded with, I think it was a right hand. They get into a nice exchange, nice scramble. Guy in blue definitely took some nice points there. Yeah, that's one thing that they're not doing as well. They're, they're not getting into, they're not utilizing their jab as well as they should. Against guys who like to be kind of um, used a non-traditional style like keeping your left hand very low to your waist um the jab is is a great tool because not only not only is the jab something you can utilize to to use as a as a as a tool to hit somebody's head you use it to jab somebody's arm you jab their body you give them different looks with the jab that makes them unsure uh you know that makes them unsure where you're coming from and exactly how to counter Okay, because your jab is kind of like the, it's the first word in the sentence of your attack, you know, and if you can vary how you use that first word, um, you can be very effective against someone who is not as active as you, because these guys, they, they kind of get active, they, they're not really creating opportunities for, for, for different kinds of attack, they're kind of waiting they're waiting, waiting, waiting for one guy to make his move, and then they're getting into an exchange that usually starts with a counter. But they're not really creating opportunities for them to mount their own offense by being proactive with the jab, taking initiative with such a vital tool. 
<laughs> another another bit of waiting, waiting, waiting. Guy in red. I like what guy in red was doing. He's he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of upper body movement compared to the guy in blue. Kind of making him a bit more of an elusive target and giving him different routes to change up the rhythm on his attacks. You know, when you utilize a lot of good upper body movement, oof, use a lot of good upper body movement. You got an opportunity to kind of keep your opponent guessing and vary the timing of your attack. When you're kind of stand, when you stand kind of still, you stand straight up, you know, your, your timing and it's, it's sometimes it's not as effective because your opponent knows exactly where your attack is always coming from. You know, you if you're standing straight up, if you're you're keeping like a straight, you know, just up and down stance, you're not using a lot of body movement, then what you really have to do is you really have to vary your offense with feints. You got to use a lot of hand feints, a lot of foot feints, you know, kind of always circling your opponent, not being content to just stand in front of them all the time. You got to really use your movement. But a guy who's got a really, a lot of good upper body movement, Manny Pacquiao is a great example of this. A lot of upper body movement, he's kind of keeping his opponent guessing as to where he's coming from. You can use your movement itself as a way to kind of vary your timing. You don't have to do it specifically with feints uh, as much as you do when you're kind of standing still in front of somebody. But that was a great fight. That was, that was magnificent, actually. Very action-packed affair. Um, that last round, ooh, you could, uh, that last round was kind of harder to judge because the guy in blue kind of came back at the end there they've got another they got some other exchanges going on very nice swing away from that uh from that hook that the guy in blue threw yeah i mean the guy in blue kind of he came back he came back he definitely came back Yep, final 10 seconds. Kind of doing what they can at the last moment. A very nice uppercut there. When they were um, when they were disengaging from the guy in red. Nice upper body movement to kind of slip uh, some incoming punches. And while they were in the clinch, he responded with a nice uppercut as they were, as they were um, coming apart. But I think that was just, yeah, fantastic ending to the fight. Guy in blue definitely came back in a meaningful way. Definitely came back in a meaningful way to possibly... I think take the fight. I actually wasn't paying attention to how many rounds this was. <laughs> if this was three rounds or two rounds, um, I wasn't counting. I was. I kind of got lost in, in the action that was going on. Um, but it looks like it's been 11 minutes, so maybe it was it was three rounds. Uh, when you go to uh, amateur events, the number of rounds that you're going to fight, I mean, it, it can vary wildly. Just like the quality of the, the event can vary uh, wildly as well. Sometimes you go to places that are super, super professional, and sometimes you go into places that were that look like they were just thrown together in like an hour, you know? <laughs> and it's just, uh, everyone just does the best they can, you know, to create an event that can facilitate uh, the excellence of these guys that, that want to be something, you know? A lot of respect for both these guys. That was a... That was a great fight. Yeah, I'm not angry at the guy in red taking the fight. I'm I'm not angry at him at all. I think it was his his early lead that really took it. His the uh, the early dominance that he showed in the fight kind of gave him a lot of judging momentum, right? Which the guy in blue tried to take away at the end. He put on a spirited effort, but it just ended up not being enough. Guy in red ended up taking it, which was cool. Good fight. I'm I'm. I'm, I'm proud for him. I'm wiping away my tears. I'm proud for him. I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah, that was a great fight. Both of them did great. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. And he's he feels so proud right now. The elation that you get from winning a boxing match. And not only that, getting something to show for it. Getting a trophy. Getting a belt. Feeling that, that, that 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 joy that indescribable joy that you get when you overcome something overcome something where you know oh, possibly overcoming something that you fear greatly you know you know fear is not absent from fighting it's an integral part of it and it's an, and it's an integral part of what makes it so rewarding because you overcome your fear say something easy work <laughs> easy work <laughs> easy work <laughs> Oh, it's great stuff, man. Great stuff. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It was a it's a great fight. Great fight.